All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally DK into the game here. The last drag. game of the night, the last game of the series. It's Dream Time versus DK here for the WPC Ace League. Thanks for joining us on Beyond the Summit, guys. It's been a pleasure casting for you all evening. And, well, we're going to bring it home right now with this last game coming out. Once again, my name is Mott. Joining me tonight Ten is Pimp Muckle. How are you doing, Pimp? How can I not be doing absolutely freaking awesome? What a game it has been. We got some absolutely amazing air picks. We had an Omni Knight from air. Definitely go check this one out if you didn't saw it yet. Hell yeah, that was a great game. As well as some crazy relocates from MMY once again. And especially what happened after the relocates. I don't even want to know. And well, let's see if in this game there is going to be a Wisp ban out. Because I certainly think it could be here. Dreamtime, I'm not sure if you really want to face MMY's Wisp once again. Yeah, I mean, they have to at least be thinking about it right now. And it wasn't really maybe necessarily just M and Y. It was just the play from DK in general. But, uh, you know, it's just it's been a pleasure to watch Ten right now for DK. And, and we'll see if they can maybe take this victory. It's going to be five interesting second, because Dreamtime, seconds, they played so really? well in that last game. And I think they're close. I think they're really close maybe to Reserve time. getting a victory here against TK, which is difficult to do. I mean, DK considered probably... The best team in the world right now. Dreamtime, they need this victory to kind of keep them afloat here in the WPC Ace League. So we'll see if this draft helps them out a bit. They're going to go for the Invoker Band right away. DK go for Batrider, which I guess no shocking surprise there. Absolutely not. I mean, if we're checking the draft right now and what is left in the pool, the Ancient Apparition could be pretty good, but it's no first pick material, usually in the second pick stage. And yeah, there you go. It's going to be a Batrider as well as... Centaur and Ancient Apparition, DK's that's pretty standard, I might say, and this reminds a lot of 6.8, but especially the Centaur is a bit nerfed, his mana cost got increased on his Hoofstomp, it's now the same on all levels, so I'm not sure if this is going to be coming into play, but in some certain situation, you might not have the second Hoofstomp ready in a team fight. I think it's a nerf that's okay, but I feel like they needed to change him a bit more. People haven't been picking him, at least not the Chinese scene, at least from what we've seen today, as much, but we've still seen him pretty much in every other scene, and... and pretty much a dominating force so central war runner strong Five pick and it feels like 6.80 again with these pickups and while well, they're going to go for the life stealer dk they know DK that life stealer is very strong against the bad. central war runner if the centaur is in the off lane you throw up a tri lane with a life stealer in the defensive tri lane and you go for a kill there you just rage up right when you're about to get stomped and well open wounds is a nice Die slow on centaur as well bad. and uh i think it's just a very strong pickup in general coming out for burning here yeah, especially considering this is going to be Burning's Lifestealer. He is absolutely legendary on literally every carry hero, but his Lifestealer is very active, which means there's going to be a lot of mid-game presence. And if you're sporting a bad rider already, you're going to pick up a Blink Dagger at a reasonable time, most Five likely. It's going to be around 10 to 12 minute mark. Around the same time, Centaur should have this one. I mean, his Blink Dagger as well. But Reserve still, time. you're going to come online very soon. And the Lifestealer, especially against the Centaur, he's really strong. Yeah, absolutely. Life Stealer. Well, we talked about it a bit already. And yeah, Blink Tiger is going to be the name of the game for, well, these two heroes, the Batrider and the Centaur, obviously, at some point in time. And the next couple of bands are going to come out. And it seems like we've shifted away from that, oh, let's pick up a Omni Knight or let's pick up a Coddle kind of mentality from the last game. And we'll get maybe a bit more, I guess you could call it normal Dota coming out for both teams here. But well, what fun is that? We'll see. Well, it is fun when the game's good, right? That's true. That's very true. If game is good, then it doesn't matter what heroes are. It could be anything, and it'd still be fun to watch as long as there's action-packed. And well, with the lifestyle, I think that there's a good shot. There's going to be a lot of action coming through Centaur as well, and a ult and all that stuff. So DK's turn they will ban out the axe. Uh, that's fine. Strong hero to ban out for sure, and somebody we've seen today already, and do great work with it. So, a couple more bans to come through, and then it's the next pick phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so far, well, it is looking rather standard, Ten although the X ban out remaining. is not as, you know, usual as we're kind of used to. Five but considering the crazy draft in the last series, I'm not I'm not surprised either that there is the X ban out because, well, X is just so good. Time. I think it's really undervalued from a lot of people still. Um, obviously, the, the competitive scene knows him. And this physical, I mean, it's a physical disable on the Battle Hunger. So whenever you just blink in and there is a BKB already activated, Giant you just team, still yeah. have a CC, which is so big. And considering DK already have a Batrider who is uh, very strong against BKB targets anyways, well, you know, just don't give him everything. It's just yeah. not going to work. And once again, Brewmaster ban against Air. Yeah, that's something we've seen Ten in the past couple of games, remaining. and not just in this series, but in general. Banning the Brewmaster just to make sure he can't get up and, well, control the team fights like you talked Dia about last game during pick. the draft. Like, that hero is so good. Controlling team fights, and not only that, he's got a free crit every some odd seconds. So, no surprise that he gets banned out. 
Uh, reminder that, guys, this is the last game. Make sure you go ahead and follow Beyond the Summit here on the Twitch channel as well as Twitter.com slash Beyond the Summit. It has been a pleasure casting for you, but it is getting a little bit early in the morning, about 10 o'clock Eastern time here Jesus on the U.S. East Coast, which is, uh, I casted last uh, last night at about, from 7 o'clock to about midnight, casted for ADL, then Five was asked to do remaining. this, and I figured, why the hell not? So, DK's no sleep for me, but WPC, pick. now, dream time, they go for the hour themselves, and that's actually kind of gross, because with a centaur, that works rather well, and you come with another hero, and all of a sudden, it's maybe even more disgusting. So, relocate, it's going to be an effect here for dream time. Yeah, exactly. Maybe just pick up something like an X Assassin for the mid lane, have your center ward on the off lane, and just go kill people. This could be an option, but still, you don't even need to have an X Assassin. Ten Considering you already have an Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, you can pretty much kill anyone on the map. Just have the Ice Blast Five coming. As soon as like the secondary Ice Blast is in the air, it's just hitting so fast. Relocate as well, and you're just going to go Reserve ahead and stomp time. people in the face. A few spirits here and there, and that's all there is to it, and people should shatter. Maybe the Lifestealer is... I mean, Lifestealer is too tanky for this. He can't just pop the Rage as soon as the Ice Blast comes. But still, if you relocate in the fog and have a blinking centaur ready to go, you're still going to kill him, which is pretty big. Has to be perfect execution, but, well, these are Chinese players we're talking about, so, yeah, I can see this working out. And interesting to note, though, that Dreamtime is actually picking up the Wisp as opposed to DK. Yeah, I think maybe they were feeling the pressure. They didn't want MMI going for it once again, MMI, excuse me, going for it once again, and I can understand that, but I don't know if DK would have picked it up this time around, even with something like a Lifestealer to combo up with, which is not bad. It's not a bad combo, Io and Lifestealer. It's not the best, obviously, but it still works well. Now, DK, with 50 seconds left in reserve time, they're thinking about what they're going to go next. They need some supports, and they need probably a mid laner as well, so we'll see if they want to go for something standard like what VG went. Yeah, the Visage, that makes sense, so um, soul pick. Assumption, Grave Chill, very strong in a tri lane. Uh, combo that up with the Life Stealer already against the Centaur. Multiple slows. Maybe a rough time for that offlane Centaur if he's going to be there. Yeah, and this just means there is a possibility of going with a Life Stealer like aggro try. Or you could even go Life Stealer in the solo safe lane and still have the Bad Shot in the, in the aggressive. DK's I don't want to say tri lane, but just have a very active support. And well, with a Tiny. Hmm, I'm not sure what I make of this, because Tiny really needs some levels in order to have some mana pool here. On level 1 to 2, I think he can't use his combo at all. Like, okay, so not level 1, obviously, because he doesn't have two spells, but I think he needs, like, level 3 or 4 in order to use his uh, his whole combo, and maybe some stats, maybe some branches, which could be cr really crucial in Trilon versus Trilon scenario. I'm going to be completely Ten honest with you here. I really don't like this Tiny pickup. I feel like Ursa could have been so much better because Five he's sort of a counter remaining. to Life Stealer. He could just right-click him down. He doesn't really care about his Rage up of an Earth Shock, which is not that big of a deal. Reserve I mean, Earth Shock's a good ability, but when you throw up your Overpower, your Fury Swipes, and you're in Rage, you can take down Life Stealer rather quickly. So that's one of the reasons why, but also Tiny's good for locking down heroes like a Visage or a Batrider who maybe are getting a bit too close. So I can understand the pick. It's not bad, but I prefer an Ursa here probably over the Tiny, but that's just my opinion anyway. Um, I just want to see some more Ursa. Um, Cloud9 actually <laughs> played Ursa quite a lot, and Sing Sing's Ursa was like pretty legit. And with a buff to the Ursa that there is no more unique attack modifier on his Fury Swipes, there's so much stuff you can do. You can do like a 4-minute Roshan after starting in the jungle, or you can just free farm him up Dyer and still do a ridiculously early Roshan, obviously. And then afterwards, what can you do? I mean, you can just buy a Blink Dagger, jump in, clap and then just eat people. Yeah. I mean, he's fuzzy wuzzy. He, that's what he does. He's just killing himself. And if you have a BKB up as well, and then maybe a Desolator, suddenly everyone is dropping. So yeah, I, I actually agree with you. It would be nice to see. But Tiny, he's more stable. That's just... Five yeah. Tiny's pretty good, right? I mean, it's the hero everybody knows. It's the hero that pairs the best with Io. Well, for the Reserve most part. Time. I mean, Eris has kind of made Tiny and Io a household kind of thing with those two heroes. So... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a fine pickup. DK go for the Outworld Devour, which we don't know what they're sending mid yet. And it's actually pretty good because you look at the amount of strength heroes here. And like Centaur, Io, and Tiny, they don't really have the most intelligence in the world, nor mana. So it's something to keep in mind, really, for Dream Time. I feel like Sanity's Eclipse is going to bring a lot of value to the team fights here for Outworld Devour. And I think that's a smart pickup for Burning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, considering Wisp is also a strength hero who doesn't have too much base in gain, I think. I'm not entirely Ten sure, but he relies a lot on items to just get his mana regeneration going. So yeah, you actually got a good point there. Five Maybe the OD, when many. he just has a good start, and this is going to be Mushi out with Devura, so it is going to have a good start. This is how the guy works. 
even if you pick up something like a lone druid right now, which would be the counter to the Outro Devourer, it's still gonna be a good lane for Mushi because you've got so much mobility. Dieting. No, okay, so not maybe mo mobility, but the point. You have a Visage who can rotate in and kill stuff with a, with the OD and maybe another support who's very active. Maybe Witch Doctor. Yeah, perhaps. I think Witch Doctor could be good, but we saw, I believe it was IG, pull that out. and I'm not sure if they're going to go down that route, but mm. they certainly can. I mean, there's plenty of supports available in the pool that are really, really strong right now. So something that's also interesting. King. Yeah, like Sand King is still available. Rasta hasn't been picked Ten all tonight. So they go for the Puck, though, for a dream time. And DK's turn to an pick. okay matchup, I guess, for the Puck. I mean... Levels are important. Getting experience is important. Getting last hits is important. OD could just deny with Astral Imprisonment, which you talked about a couple games ago. And I think that I feel like Dreamtime are okay, but OD could certainly run amok if he gets a good start here. It's really going to be tough, too, to gank him. Like, Tiny's not going to leave the lane. They're not going to really gank until, like, level 6 in the IO, which is going to take some time. IO and Ancient Apparition together, probably not the best combo to go for a gank. So OD should farm just fine, and I don't see them Five shutting him down really at all. Remaining. Um, yeah, I actually agree. Maybe you just go Tiny Wisp in the mid lane and have Puck in the safe lane as well as the Ancient Apparition. Maybe rotating a bit, helping out in the top, helping out in the, in the bottom, um, not bottom lane, in the easy and in the mid lane. And what? Nice. Hear that? I, I, this is not as crazy of a pick, but it's certainly cool because what you could do is if they're just relocating in on top of somebody, Lana could just black hole and like that's huge. So like... Mm -hmm. Now you have to be very, very careful with your relocates. You're like, all right, is Lonham around? Does he have Black Hole up? If, if so, we need to be careful. So DK kind of have these picks that work really well up against Dreamtime right now. Like a lot of them. And uh, I don't know. I love me some Enigma, man. So I'm, I'm excited for it. Should be oh, pretty hell good. hell yeah. Yeah. There's nothing better than like a 4-5 man Black Hole and everyone's just going complete ham and suddenly everyone turns around and kills her anyways. But yeah, <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be very amazing, I have to say. Yeah, so we are going to jump into the game. It is the last game of the Prepare evening, guys. Thank battle. you so much for sticking around and well, watching some great Dota with us here. WPC Ace League, DK versus DT. Game number two for DT, Dream Time. We'll have Air on the Puck, XDD on the Tiny. Everybody heading bottom right now. Super's going to be on the IO and Dreamy U on the Ancient Apparition. And I believe I've gotten everybody. Uh, in July, we'll be on the Central War Runner. That'll round up the lineup for Dream Time. Absolutely wonderful. And meeting in the bottom lane, maybe, maybe not. We see burning right now in the live center. That's all that thought for just a moment. Is burning going to be getting caught out here? They don't have any sort of very long range initiation. No fissure. Maybe a toss into some sort of stun, but it just doesn't look like. So burning is going to be handling the live center. Weapon X, aka MMY, on the visage. In the mid lane, it's going to be Mushi on his Outward Devourer. In the top, currently just chilling out there, it's going to be Lam on his Enigma. And suddenly, Ice 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 appears, and he's going to be warding up the pole camp, and he's going to be handling the Bat Rider. Oh, MMY getting caught out of position. They did some damage to him. He Grave Chilled to get away. One more right click will do the job. Can they do it? Yes! Just barely. Super gets it done. Wow, so close. But Dream Time, that five man aggression pays off. And uh, that's nice, but uh, I wanted to go back. Lonham's sitting top right now just to deny a creep, I think, for the this Batrider, begins. just to make sure Ice 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 doesn't really have to really worry about kind of blocking. I mean, he'll probably head to the jungle, I'd imagine, but they already warded up his jungle so heavily. Look at this. I mean, there's three wards right in this vicinity. He might have to just go top, I feel like, for Lonham. Yeah, that's actually really brutal. And this is something we see a lot against the Dyer. Because at the Dyer, you're like just chilling out in this area. And if it doesn't work, if you don't have those wards up, you're just completely screwed. And so far, well, there is going to be a... It's a trial and mid. All right. All right. Well, All right. I think I think A is going to head top, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, it's going to be dual lane IO. And we've seen this before against uh, specifically ODs. And I'm sure Mushi's been on the receiving end of this. In fact, I know he has. But down bottom, some damage going on in July. There's the Grave Shield going through. Burning, still no Rage Hoof Stomp. Not available, no mana for it. The right clicks isn't there. Burning's not fast enough. They needed one more oh, the proc. from MMY. And man, yeah, that South Shield coming into huge effect right now. That's unbelievable that he stays alive. Yep, well... Good up, Pseudo Random is going to be helping out so much. Also now active on the X, but suddenly Lam finds some farm. He's going to be very happy about this one, but there is nothing else. He can't just farm this camp and nothing else. So what do you do now? Do you try to gank? I guess you, you have to, but he can't really. I mean, he's only got in July. Oh, yeah. stomp! Stay alive. Nice no, stomp. No rage available for burning, and no mana to use it anyway. So 
Yeah, he doesn't have Malphus yet, so he can't really stun or even chain stun. He's got plenty of clarities, though. He'll pick one up himself, but he's got to think about maybe rotating elsewhere, like top or something. I, I don't know. The problem is, like, these wards are a real big issue. All of his camps are warded, with the exception of the small one. Batrider, I said, says going down top. And uh, that's air getting the kill. And you called these lands correct, too. You mentioned how it was going to be a dual lane mid with Dyer's Puck and AA top. You're absolutely right. That attack. was the case, so... Dyer's structures are fortified. Yep, also burning now, finding the Wisp. Oh, super. There is no tether target, really. Oh, there's some creeps. You can't just tether to the creep wave, but I'm not sure if this is going to be enough. Also it's burning. Open wounds. He doesn't have it. He's got no mana for it, but he's oh. super's going to try to juke. He might he's just tether mid. And the bottle charge is going to go. There it goes, and the tether is going to hit up on XDD, keeping him alive, so... Burning, trying to get that kill, but missing out on some CS in the process, and... Unfortunate, but... Well, it's fine, I'm sure. Invisibility. Yep, looking good so far, as well as Isis Ice in the top lane. Um, he can't find too much right now, but the thing with the bad is whenever there is some, I want to say, bad start in his own lane, in the off lane, he can just pull some stuff, which is exactly what is happening, because it's the dire off lane, it's coming into play once again here. Oh, smart play from Demi, you're just stopping everything there is. Um, and still, he's going to get a bit of experience, and as soon as this, uh, the jungle is not warded anymore, he can just rotate into the, the Radiant jungle, and he's going to be completely fine. Yeah. The problem is, though, is Lanham is getting nothing, man. He's sitting at level 2, not even close to level 3 yet. That's actually Sorry, pretty no. impressive, the fact that he's sitting on level 2 right now, and he has nothing to go with. He might just sit mid and leech experience. He still can go top, but he needs sentries or something, or he just needs to just find a lane to leech experience off of. It's not working out for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, currently, um, they're still, looking at the CS, it's rather interesting to see the Puck is doing ridiculously good top lane. Uh, considering he was against the Batrider at the start, so he kind of caught up nicely, but still, the one and only Burning is obviously just farming everything there is on the bottom lane. And what is his skill with going to be? And oh, wait a second, mid lane? Oh, they're going to be fine. Nice, nice, nice. Was playing a bit aggressively, doing some damage to Dream U. Face shift came through. They're still maybe pushing in this mid lane. Mushi's not really going down. He's not getting killed. And Look at this. Lanham has been forced to go for the Ancients, which he's not doing a terrible job of right now. In fact, he might even get the stack, or at least one of these, these creeps, which will provide him maybe a level. He's microing the best of his abilities. He'll have his clarity canceled, unfortunately, but he'll at least take one down, getting him ever so close to level 3, which is huge for that level 2, uh, I guess, Eidolon. Demonic conversion, if you will, so... Lanham's unconventional play might be enough here, I suppose. Yeah, it looks like. I mean, it's a smart play. He can't go to any lane, otherwise he would just leech experience. And that's not really helping out anyone. Because Bedwetter, he needs his experience. He can just... And, oh wow, that's actually really smart. Look at this guy. Ice is ice, finding his enemy's jungle, and he's just gonna go ahead and farm this all up. And, well, suddenly he's gonna be spotting a lot of gold. Maybe some tranquils? Hmm, not sure. But in the meantime, Mushi, oh, XCD. But there is nothing else. They're completely out of mana. Malphus on super. He already tethered up. Is there enough damage here? Mushi doesn't really do much Whoa. here. Malphus, one more would do the job. Oh, Ice, 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 Ice wants this kill, but there is a bottle charge for super. He is fine. He'll be able to tether away as well. I'm getting a bit greedy there, but uh, they'll stay alive. That was close. Man, what a play. And um, yeah, there, Batrider. He's going to have his tranquils up and ready to go. And so far, Burning just going for the face boots. So no super greedy Midas coming out. Maybe he's going to go Midas right now or just go into the drums and go fight. He could go either way, I feel like. I think I think most people like to get the Midas after the phase now, just so they can be a bit more effective early on. And they can certainly even go for a kill on Centaur now, now that Burning has Rage ready to go. It's only like, what, three second duration, but still should be good enough. <laughs> I don't know, they need more damage though. They need another hero maybe down in this bottom lane to really get the skill. Centaur, he's sitting at level 4 right now. He's not getting the most CS. He's only got 4, clearly. And Batrider's doing a bit better in that regard, but he's about the same levels, I believe. In fact, Ice 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 is getting beaten by experience, inexperience by only a little bit, however. And uh, Super and the Tiny are going to rotate together to somewhere else. They're going to leave Mushi again to farm this mid lane. Hmm, that's surprising, I want to say, because Mushi, he's now level 6. If he finds a nice rune, there currently is not that much HP up on anyone. I mean, bottom line, in July, he's got 800, that's nice, but this is pretty much the only one who is really tanky. Dreamy, you, you can't just get dropped by a hammer. Same for air, actually. So if he rotates and finds a rune, and there is a regeneration right now, so... Oh, that's a nice asphalt. Mushi... Oh, seriously, Mushi? He was... Oh, man. He was just trying to bottle up. He was trying to get as many bottle charges as he could before. Well, that Wisp was going to try to grab it, and... He waited as long as possible, but he gets the regen rune in the end, so 
Not the best ganking rune, but still, it's nice to have. In July, looking for a potential pickoff here on Lanham, but now some of these camps aren't warded. And yes, he's had a rough jungle, and he's done okay for himself for the most part. He'll start getting back into it here in a couple moments, so... Uh, in July, just casually running by mid, he'll get astral up and give... Some more intelligence for the OD. I'll throw up an Observer one of the high ground. Nicely done there, just to get vision. They've rotated the Tiny and the Wisp top. They'll take a couple of stacks here together with the, the Spirits and XDD and his oh Avalanche. Nice. Oh, so. He's oh, boy, really going in super aggro. He wants well, this. I'm not sure what he wants to fight there. Well, uh, Avalanche, Ice, 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 getting low, a bit brave. He should survive. He's going to try to TP on the high ground. That is actually going to work somehow. What? <laughs> All right, well... All right, I guess. Well, ice, 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 once again. I mean, he's known for his crazy plays from time to time, so this is not too surprising. In July, getting slowed up, bottom lane. MMY, does, structures are he's just going to tell him, like, get the hell out of this. This is our tower. But is it really burning? It's going in deep here. Rage is popped. Nice Gets the D9. Dyer's That's a big one air. He's got his ultimate ready to go. When is he going to pop it? It's a nice two-man call here, but are they going to be following this one up? Nice. It's a nice dodge. Oh, wow, what a play. And, well, in July, double edge is down, burning, but it's only one falling right now. It's only the Visage. It's still no one dying on the side of DT though, so this is a trade favoring them. And the deny, that's a big one. Lanham may be in trouble though, Waning Rift's gonna go, the right clicks and the Spirits, that's enough for Air to grab a double kill again. Air has put in the most work I think of the early game for DT, uh, for sure. I mean, you could argue other things, but well, no, Dreamy's gonna try to TP out top lane, no flame break there for Ice Ice Ice, and unfortunately, he cannot pick up that kill. The first kill of the game it would have been, but that's not gonna be the case anymore as well. Nice TP. Reaction coming in from that ancient apparition. Mm -hmm. And suddenly DK is trailing 0 for 4 on the kill board. It's not as grim um, when we're checking the gold. They are actually leading in gold, which is rather surprising. But still, maybe this is going to change with Mushi going down. XCD, he's completely out of mana, but he can just club away. He's got so much damage. 150 damage a pop. Now they're going to be going. Mushi, defensive disruption. Where is it? He can't. He can't find it. He was silenced up, so Aaron. Excellent coordination from his whole team. Stampede just helping out so much. And suddenly, well, 3.5 people in the mid lane I feel like because this MP is really helping out so much attack. yeah and they actually gave XDD a lot of mana there coming in with the bottle and the tether as well so just making sure that he could get that mana to use his toss and avalanche if necessary but air coming through dropping a couple of abilities and getting the kill there level eight for air almost level six for enigma so he's got his boots now he's starting to get to a point where black hole is going to be maybe sort of useful and they can get a couple of kills Io, what about him he's level five as well getting close to six Puck already has his Blink Dagger at 9 minutes in. Air is playing out of his mind wow. right now. That is a disgusting Blink Dagger time and coming out for that Puck player. Yeah, that is absolutely crazy. And, well, Air, last game he was playing such a crazy Omni Knight. And this game around, well, his Puck is really showing off here. Question is, does he got just go and, I mean, fight, fight, fight? Is this all there is to it? Or is he going to, I don't know, like, push something? I guess he just wants to kill SSI top lane soon. Well, maybe not. He's just gonna get destroyed here. Yeah, ultimate point nails him down, and well, that's a good kill. And this is sort of a gl the global combination we're talking about in the draft here. So you've got two people coming in with a, with a relocate, as well as a global ultimate from Dreamy U. Well, you can just kill everyone. And speaking of Dreamy U, he's finding a lot of farm in this top lane. This is an ancient apparition that is well on his way towards potentially an Aghanim Scepter. Obviously, he's got to deal with the wards and the sentries and what have you, but. Dreamy is playing well. He sniped that last kill with that ancient apparition ice blast that you just saw. Super picks up a DD rune for himself and bottles it up. XD along with the ride, and he's got 1300 oh, gold in the lane. bank. Bottom lane, though, yeah. Air getting caught out. This could be a big kill. The Stampede, the Malphite's keeping in place. Phase shift going to keep him alive even longer. Can he make it out? Looks like no. The Firefly picking up the kill. That was almost scary. Mid lane, though. Mushi getting tossed out of a combo. He'll go down. That's Tiny getting the kill. So one for one trade, actually. They lost their Visage player not too long ago either. That was Puck getting the kill down bottom as well. So two for one when it comes down to it. Yeah, I want to say this favors DT just a bit because burning... Wow, that was a quick rage here right after the stun from the Tiny went off. And in July, didn't have mana for a hoofstorm. He's just... Oh, look at this guy. He's got 182 mana. This is... Oh, yeah, yeah. This hurts. He's going to go to bottom anyways and try to defend this. The Eidolons are doing some decent damage to the tower, but... For right now, it's it's 8-1. to one. I don't think DK should be panicking. I still think they have a lead here. In fact, they do by 2,000 in terms of gold. Experience-wise, it's actually going in favor of DT, but not by much. Well, I guess you could say the Dyer's same thing, 2,000. So, the items coming out, 
Mushi and the rest of the squad are starting to get something going their way. They're going to get a four step for Mushi not too long from now. Ice 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 has his Blink Tiger actually, which is surprising. I didn't think he was close last time I checked, but he is now. Burning has his Midas as well. They're finding more CS than Dreamtime is, and that's really the issue for Dreamtime right now. They're not getting as much off the map here, but they're going to start finding more and more kills as they smoke up. They're looking to find mid lane, maybe no, um, MMY, or they're going to find... Oh, Lon, I'm getting caught out. The toss, the avalanche, the kill going for the tiny. And that's about as easy as it's going to get for a smoker to see gank. I'm not sure why MMY is still here. He needs to leave. Yeah, oh. he just go real quick. Stampede as well. What a throw, and that's a good one, if I may say so. And hell yeah, they're gonna pick up one more kill. It's one for ten against DK. Can you believe that? I mean, we've seen teams that are really strong be in precarious positions before, so... Yeah, the score lead is, is kind of daunting, and it's crazy for DK, but they're certainly not evident for Dreamtime. They've got to keep the pressure on. XDD's like a freaking quarterback, man, but Blank Lasso and Super getting caught out. Toss Avalanche, Isocise getting low. There's the Malphite, the Black Hole as well. They want XDD. Dream Coil coming through, not going to save his life. Big waiting rift. Huge Dream Coil onto four. The relocate back in. Oh, the Spirits getting a double kill for Super. Disgusting amounts of damage as he bought back, relocated in. Tether coming through as well. Onto air, overcharge, the illusory orb, burning, rages up just in time. He'll jaunt, he wants this kill, but he's not going to find it. He still has chilling touch. Lana with Malphite might go here. Nice waning rift, phase shift as well, blink away. Air is schooling them right now with such devious plays. What the hell, Air? This guy, what did he have for his breakfast? I want to have the same stuff and then just go queue up for a, MM, uh, for a matchmaking game and suddenly I've got like, what, 16k rating at least. I'm not even interrogating. No, seriously. Um, I have to say, Super's Wisp relocate was on point. You mentioned the disgusting amount of damage coming up from the Wisp. If you relocate in to like three people or what was it and have all the Wisp ready to go, suddenly everyone's just dying. Yeah. And it was really nice to see. So yeah, it's, I mean, still DK, they got two kills out of this. Um, traded kind of evenly against DT, but I think the Lysia went down. No, he didn't. No, Burning survived, but All right. they lost a couple other heroes there. It looked really good for DK up until that Dream Coil, Radiant which caught everybody into that buyback, attack. which was huge. To have the presence of mind to buy back on that hero and think that you're going to do enough damage with your spirits and get some kills, that was impressive. But Smoke of Deceit gank. The Nakes Bomb's ready to go. Blink, Lasso, Air. The phase shift, though. Air waiting rifts right now. Lasso not getting popped just yet. Ice, Ice, Ice getting low. The Dream Coil is up. The Flame Break. The Soul Assumption long range on Super. Not doing real much there. Now the Avalanche is going to fly. Blink it ahead from Air. Looking for more. The Ancient Apparition. Ice Blast misses. There's going to be the Soul Assumption. Batrider going down before we can get that Lasso off. Air with the quick fingers again with that phase shift. Nicely done. Looking for more. He wants these uh, Vistage Familiars. He'll find one nope, of them at the very gonna least. going to get one. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's once Dyer's again the little things. I mean, Air is just doing some great work. He's 4, 1, and 5. Out of the 13 kills we've got, he just participated in 9. And he's not done yet. He just wants to find Burning, who's completely silenced up. Can't rage, can't do anything here. And Radiant's yeah, by the way, we, we mentioned early on, he attack. indeed went for a Midas, which means not too much HP up onto him. And oh, maybe? No. Oh, there's a stun. There's a toss combination. And suddenly Ice 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 is dead. Everyone blows up, but Burning is here. He wants some blood. XDD, but he is not dying yet. He's just getting killed up by Super in the end. He dies finally. Visage picking up the kill, but you might have the have to question if this is all worth it here, especially with... The, oh no, MMY. MMY is falling once again here. Super. Super and Air, what is happening in this game? They're just playing out of the mines right now. Yeah, they are being so aggressive and it's paying off for them. They've lost the tiny, but they don't mind. They get burning. They get two other kills on top of that. Air has been... Just going hard here on this puck, and he needs to. I mean, it's clear that he's doing most of the work. Super's helped out a lot as well. All that while, Angelai was top. He's got his Blink Dagger now. He's got Stampede. There are some mana issues, as you can see, for the Centaur. His Hoof Stomp is not quite, you know, really... I mean, it costs a bit of mana. He probably will go back home and get something. Maybe, I don't know. You don't really want to go for something that helps you with mana. In terms of Centaur, you usually go for a Pipe, which is fine. But you can always go for a Blade of Mail if you want to have to deal with that mana issue. So... The Radiant's thing is also, Mushi hasn't been really attack. a part of these fights for a while. He's farmed up his four staff. He's got gloves of haste, which will probably be built into treads next. His Sandy's Eclipse hasn't yet to be dropped, and that's one huge ultimate they have to use. There's a BKB coming for Enigma, which is about a thousand, less than a thousand gold away even. So the items are there for DK. They have a potential to get Dyer's back into this game. It's just, in fact, they, they were ahead in gold for a while, but it's even now. Yeah, that's really crazy. I mean, 
there was so much farming going on and still DK are still looking really good on this yes chart but it just isn't there if you're getting killed constantly and even super is just finding a lot of farm right now with his wisps oh is he getting scouted out here yeah I says I see. he wants to go for a kill does he find him yes he does and burning just pops out and they just gonna blow him up right here there's nothing super can do maybe no he can't no tether to the tiny end well in the end it's a much needed kill and there's also was a killing spree on a level 11 wisp the Wisp is essentially a core right now, looking at the levels on the yeah. side of DT. My goodness, that is actually crazy to think about. That Wisp did so much work. Attack. They're gonna try to defend bottom though. Burning will CP here, but he's alone. He has Rage, Blink Stomp, oh, Rage, wonderful. nice timing from Burning. The AA ult going through as well. Burning doesn't seem to mind the Stampede going. He's got no help coming. Finally, another TP rotation in. Now, MMY's here to get, you know, just to help out essentially, but Burning didn't really need the help, I guess, when it was all said and done. But... Oh, blink, lose your orb, jaunt away. Air man, air. What the hell is going on with this guy? He's just taunting them right now. Blinks in, lose your orb away. Short phase shift, and then just be like, "Hey guys, high five! I'm out of here once again." See ya. I'm the king here. You know Dota kings. It's still impressive that Burning's actually getting so much farm right now. He's sitting on 6k net worth and only one having more air. And speaking of those two, well, there's a storm. It's a nice silence. And they just blow the burning up. And suddenly, what looked like a very even... Oh, wait a second. They got more. They even got MMY here in the back lines. What a relocate coming out here. Yeah. They're, they're playing so solid right now. And yeah, you have rage, but it's not going to get off if you get dream coiled and waning ripped in about five seconds flat. So Air put on his Nikes or something this morning because he's been on point and he's dunking on fools with a lot of his abilities. So... <laughs> I gotta say, it's been impressive to watch, but once again, DK are still farming, but now they're getting oh, even further down. Mushy. They're looking for Mushi, but they have no way to initiate. They'll pop the drum charge, but they didn't have, like, a blink dagger. Luckily, now, Lana picks up a BKB. That is a very, very important item here in this game. I don't think there's anything that stops that BKB black hole from going anymore. I'm pretty sure that's the, that's the case, so... Um, yeah, looks like maybe... I'm not sure if the dream call, if you deploy it, no, I'm if you actually sure stun. It doesn't go through the, the right. BKB. I'm, like, I'm almost positive about attack. that, but I've been wrong before. So, Yeah, I mean, Lanham now, it's really going to come down to him and his black holes. And he'll probably go for a blink next, considering he didn't go for a mech or anything like that. They just want to try to get holes. And the thing is, he's only gotten one this entire game, and it's really not... I mean, it helped out at the time, but it really didn't give them much in terms of, I guess, later game potential. So... Now that he has the BKB, they might smoke up. They have one on Lanham here. Yep, there's going to be a Nakes Bomb coming up from Ice Ice Ice. They'll get back to the tower. They want to make sure they're out of vision of this Dire Ward. I think they just were. There's no pings coming out, so you have to imagine that DK are safe here. They'll head top, potentially, and look for a kill. Mushi's around as well with level 2 Sanity's Eclipse and a 4 Staff, and Tread's going to be flying out as well. They can maybe go for something, but they're still playing slowly. They're not going top just yet. Mm -hmm. Which is surprising, I want to say, and well, maybe there's, yeah, they're just heading to the jungle right now. Ice, 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 he's using his Firefly, he's got all the flying vision he needs. Maybe the Courier's in a bit of trouble, but what really, oh wait, is there a full egg? Oh, the Agonims is not yet is done. Attack. Hmm. Yeah, it's flying out to XTD right now. No, he needs, yeah, like you said, he needs another component coming out as well, but top they'll take down a tier one tower. The smoke of the seat gank not really paying off just yet, at least for MMY and the rest of DK. They're in a position to maybe pincer move and go on this courier. Oh no, Radiant's they see it, but are they gonna get the kill? The Eidolons, attack. they will potentially do it. It's Radiant gonna fall. Okay, so courier will go down. Dream time, that'll be gone for about three attack. minutes or so. At least they got something, you know, but they lost a tier one tower because of it. Yeah, it is not the best trade, especially considering the map control you're giving up. It is only, quote unquote, an offlane tier one, but it's still a tier one, and it's still a bit of map control you're giving away. Each and every time something like this happens, then well, so far, Visage... Oh man, MOI has to be really careful that there is no sort of relocate just behind the tier 2 coming up, because they certainly can go for it. And so far, well, it's just very smart play from both teams, actually. Like, DK, they know they're behind. And meanwhile, they are leading still in gold, but the experience is still going in favor of DT by a great margin. And we can see this in, in, the, in the hero levels. There's literally, like, only one level 2 ultimate up on the side of DK, and... Everyone except for the A has got his level to ultimate up already on DT, so that's the big deal here in the team fights. Yeah, and it's looking grimmer and grimmer as we move along here for DK. Ice Blast is gonna go, missing the stomp as well. He'll stampede away, making sure he gets away cleanly. Ice 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 is gonna, well, he actually just canceled that TP. Okay. 
He's gonna go instead go on air. Firefly, Lasso, can they finally bring down this pug? Absolutely. And they melt him. That's exactly what they needed. So now burning in Ice Ice Ice. Getting to be a part of that kill on Puck is a really big deal. Lifestealer still only has his drum right now, but he's getting close to another item here. So Burning is starting to see at least a little bit of farm. He's actually not too far behind the Tiny, who has a full Aghanim's. Nice Rage. The TP's going to come through again. Oh, he should fall. Yeah, he, he'll survive. No toss coming out, obviously. And XDD, maybe a little upset he couldn't get that kill. What a player. Just, you know, keeping a calm head here. Just TPing out Rage TP. Pretty good stuff. And, well, now we got our items ready to go, as well as a full stuff on the Centaur. So, there is a lot of good items coming on the side of DT. And they didn't have the most farm. DK are still out farming them. Yeah, not too much, but 1.5k gold. We are 22 minutes and that's not... Yeah, as I mentioned, like, this is not too much, but it's still a bit. And, well, if DK can just chill out and wait a bit until they are all level 11, which they are pretty much all, except for the Visage, but that's not that great of a deal. So... Maybe we're going to see some teamfights going DK's favor. Although they are trailing so many kills, they still got so much gold to work with. And that's the big deal here. Yeah, the Midas's are starting to pay off right now. You look at DT, I don't think they have a single one on their side. So they're just going for early game aggression and pressure. Whereas if you look at DK, the Midas's are going to start paying off here. Mushi's going to get another item. He's getting a lot of gold in the bank, I think. He's got a thousand. Same with burning right now. So they're looking for another item here. Might be an S and Y. Centaur is going to stampede. Looks like maybe top lane. In July, get caught out, but he'll stay alive. No ultimate there. Link lasso looking for super. He'll find it. XDD gonna toss him up immediately. Batrider getting demolished, but burning wants to go on super. He's gonna relocate away now. Dream Quill waiting rift. Lana very low. He gets Dagon. He's getting low. Tossed up as well. Double kill for XDD. They'll work out MMY. They'll kill him. XDD gets the triple kill. The only one surviving. Oh, well, that's gonna be burning. And I believe he TP'd away just in time to make it out. Yep, and that was a really good fight here. That was surprising because I thought DK had this fight in the bank, uh, in the back, because Yo was just forced to just TP out away with his ultimate. So there was no Centaur in the fight. And there was also no Wisp for a very long time, but it looks like just DK blowing a bit too much on this lone Wisp, and suddenly air happened. It yeah. just, it's just an air shell right, right now. This guy is just delivering so much. And also XCD, even though he doesn't have the best attack speed uh, when he doesn't have the overcharge, the drums, you know, it's the little things, it all adds up, and suddenly those clubs, well above 200 damage, they just, it just hits so hard. Roshan He's gonna grab the tiny as well. The and they're looking real solid now. That last fight really helped them a lot, I think. If we look at the gold graph, it's gotta have changed a little bit. Yeah, it's now only 1,000 in favor of DK, and Dyer's a team that, tower is under they're sporting a decent lineup, even late game. They're still in this for sure, but Mushi, again, not being involved in any of these fights, maybe hurting them. An item about to fly out for him potentially. He he had some money and, and now it's gone. I think he just maybe he had his treads for a while. He's had his four step for a while, so I don't know what he exactly bought, but he's backing away now, as you can clearly see. Burning, he has the Sanjip, so SNY is gonna be his choice of item. Uh gives you that move speed, that race car potential. But the problem is every time they go for a lasso, Ice 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 gets caught out of position. They try to go for that black hole last time around with Lana, but the Dream Coil and the Waning Rift, like you mentioned, and he didn't pop the BKB for it. He's got a blink now, so he's got potential to really catch some heroes out of position. It really is going to be one good team fight, probably give DK a decent amount. Um, but oh. burning. He should live. Oh, the toss! They tossed him back finally. I was waiting for Here that earlier. Go. The rage. Not going to help that out there. And burning now. No, he gets caught out of position with that toss coming in from XDD. So that's the that's that's what you need really is that toss coming out from the tiny. Exactly. And in the meanwhile, still DK, they've got the whole ingredients for a BKB up in their own fountain. So Ogre Club as well as a Mithril Hammer just casually lying around. They're looking fancy, but the thing is I have no idea who this is. I sure feel it's... like this is Mushi. Yeah, I was about to say. Should be right. Yeah, I mean because he had money before, he doesn't have it anymore. It's probably I mean it's gotta be his. Mm -hmm. So, right. Mushi's BKB is going to be done soon. Radiant's he actually just purchased up the recipe. Now it's attack. going to finally come out. The full BKB is completed, and he'll have to probably sell his Null Talisman or something, or actually just sells his bottle altogether. You know, and use the Midas on a creep as well when he could find one. Batrider, I feel like Ice 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 has had a bit of a rough game. He's died Radiant's six times. It's a lot fallen. for a Batrider, and I think the second most amount of deaths in the game, only behind MMY, who's playing a Visage, who is a support, and well, he's supposed to die that often, anyways. 
Now it comes Double down damage. to what do you do with the Sages if you're Dream Time? You've got some decent farm of this Tiny. He's the most net worth in the game. Do you feel comfortable fighting uphill? They'll probably just farm, I feel like, for a bit. But if they farm, that no kind of gets them back into it. Top lane in July. Sandy's Eclipse used just to get that kill on the Centaur. That's a bit All right, cool. but there's a relocate coming in, and they're going to turn this around Mushi. He's popping his PKB, just going to TP out, and that's a smart play. That's a really smart play, so you can actually just go and TP out. As filling up the Tiny, this is all you really need, and oh, are they going to be finding Ice Ice Ice? No, I has got a fall so. stuff. He's fine, yeah, I think, where fine. he is. He could TP it out right now if he wanted to, but... Good relocate, a 1 for O trade, I suppose, there. BKB wasted, but not a big deal. A Silk Your Ass almost done for EXDD, and uh, Toss was not available. It was on cooldown, obviously, so... Yeah, I mean, in July going down, but Sandy's Eclipse used now. Firefly, Dream Coil is up, Dagon as well. Ice, 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 just finding trouble every which way. Firefly still going. He might survive this time around, but he's getting rather Little low. Tiny. Oh, here comes Tiny. The Avalanche just missing. Ice, 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 Jukes at the AA ult. He blinks away in time. No, he does not. Ice, Ice, Ice goes down to the Ancient Apparition. The trail just hit. It looked like the impact was not there, but he blinked away just a second or two. It uh, looks like too late there, so... Yeah, he didn't get hit by the impact because he blinked away, but the debuff also gets applied when this uh, ice ball is in the air and you're just, you know, the ice ball is flying on top of you, so you're still going to get the debuff. Not the, not the impact damage, though. Yeah. Still, it was enough, and in the end, they get the kill. They expend it so much, but still, I mean, you get the kill, and Ancient Apparition is going to be really happy about this one. And he, I mean, this guy, he's got an Aghanim Scepter, yeah. he's got 2k gold and a bank account. He is filthy rich for an AA. Yeah, level 2 AA ult plus Ice Blast, or excuse me, plus Aghanim Scepter is, is pretty nice to have, I think, at this point. Really good for team fights, and yeah, it's a pretty short cooldown as well. So now DK have to deal with that on top of really everything else the Dreamtime have, so... It's... Especially against Burning. That's so good against Burning. It's ridiculously strong. Yeah, absolutely. Burning's already having a rough time as it is. He's barely got an SNY. He'll have it in a couple hundred, even a hundred or so, if he decides to go for it, which he should. Lana has yet to hit another black hole since about five minutes into the game or so. So that's the big turnaround. And that's what I think you've got to be apprehensive oh, about. Mushi. Top lane, Mushi, Stomp, Stampede, Relocate. He'll pop the BKB. He'll try to get out. He'll try to TP away, but he'll use his Astral instead and he'll go down. So he uses the TP and then he just Astrals and Welp dies. And see, nah, he gets caught out of position, it seems like. They relocate back, though. Lana, black hole, maybe. Not going to use it just yet. They want XDD. They have the Ages on him, mind you. The Visage Familiar is still chasing. Burning looking for a potential hit up. Now, Lasso on Super. Whoa. He's about to fall. He's done. Lonham chasing after XDD, but he's too fast. Those phase boots in the drum make it impossible for him to chase. But wow, I was sure this was going to be an SNY. It's a Heaven's Halberd coming up for Burning now. I actually like this. I really like this. I have to say, the little bit of evasion it's going to provide, I think it's actually quite a bit. 25%? Yeah, yeah 25% evasion, as well as a maim, which is good when you actually chase. Uh, and of course, you're gonna have your disarm, and well, he's just getting blown up here, but there's your black hole, immediate cancel, what a play coming out here, and once again, they lose only one, the wisp is on the sidelines, but this was done early on, burning is dead, who's gonna be the next one to fall, MMY, they got a corner to you, man, and yeah, this is just it, look at those clubs, man, they're just gonna go ham here, and this is all there is to it, for this guy, and it's a 2 for 0 exchange, after changing the wisp for Mushi, and this is so good for DT, they can't fight there. They need to regenerate up a bit. Yeah, and that would have been such a good time to push, though. That cancel of the black hole. I'm pretty sure there was no toss available. I don't know what happened there, but it really just didn't work out. He, I think, immediately pressed S or something. At least that's what it looked like from my camera. So now with the black hole down for a good 146 seconds, they're going to go for a tier 2 mid. One of the last tier twos left in the map. The last one obviously being top. Mushi has yet to really throw out a big Radiance Sandy's Eclipse. Tower. He's going for a Scythe next. He's got his BKB like Radiance we talked about already, but a huge five. fight. And they tossed the life stealer to the low ground. XDD's like, I don't even want to deal with you. Just get out of my way. We're going to kill the people. So Radiance Burning has been kind of treated like meat in this game. Getting tossed around. And Dream Time. Well, blink. No, oh, Craggy. Nice Stop as well. Nice Jeez. double edge going through. Burning now. He's going to try to fight. They did use the Halberd on XDD. Look at the damage coming through. The overcharge, the silence, the day gun burning. He's tossed up into the air. He'll get mech to survive. Lasso, ice, ice, ice. He bought back. Is this enough? Stop. Oh, double stop. edge coming through. The damage. The illusory orb. Air with the double kill. Sandy's Eclipse is dropped. They'll pick up one kill. Mushi getting tossed back down to the low ground. He's going to try to fight on Dreamy U. XDD, he gets Malphite right now. In trouble, he'll fall. They defend. 
but they lose a lot of heroes in the process. Dream of you, he'll be the next to fall and obviously should go down here. And that's a double kill for Mushi. Good defense, but they wasted a lot for it. This also cost him a buyback on ice size, and he's really poor. We have 31 minutes and he's sporting a blink dagger and a force of and that's it. Nothing else. And he doesn't even get passive gold. Now it's just kicking in once again. He's dirt poor. He, he, he just got absolutely nothing. And he also died after buying back. So this is going to be setting him behind a lot. And we just see it. Without a BKB, he really is... I don't want to say a non-factor in those fights. Because he still can just grab someone. And, you know, you can just use the Badrider as a carrier for the life to to go into the fights. But I don't know. It just, it just doesn't work. And the good thing, however, is Lam is actually picking up what looks like an Aghanim Scepter, and if he gets down double mid Midnight Pulse before he actually ults, those people are going to be dying. Attack. Yeah, but the thing is, he's only gotten off one black hole in this game, and, and I, I keep going back to it, but that's a very Dyer's important point for Lam right now. Attack. He's made so many big plays on these kind of like team fighting heroes. You Dyer's think back to MLG Columbus and his play on that Earthshaker. This guy's been there. But look at the items coming out now. That's a Veil of Discord done oh for the gosh. AA. That is a Scythe of Vice done for air on that Puck, who is already running amok here in this game. Luckily, Mushi will pick up a Scythe of his own, which kind of counteracts it a bit. But DT and air, they have quite the lead, I'd imagine, now. If we look at the gold graph, it's actually not that bad, but I'm surprised That's it's not right. even further up. It's actually only 1,000 in favor of them, which seems ridiculous. DK are doing such an incredibly good job farming. Especially La. He's sitting on top three CS. I don't know how he's doing this, but well, apparently he's just so good. And now he's got his Aghanim Scepter completed, so they do have a chance. The Wombo Combo, it is real. The Dream is still alive, but can they pull it off? And going up against an Aegis on the Tiny, this is absolutely brutal. Yeah, we're 33 minutes in right now, and it's still very close. It can go any which way here. In the next couple of minutes, you'd have to imagine Dream Time. They're about as farmed as they want to be, maybe. You could still wait for a couple of items for the Tiny, maybe a Manta style and two. Well, there's a lot of items he can go for, obviously. But for the Puck, he'll get a couple more Dagon levels. He'll be fine. AA, he's pretty much got, well, more than he could have ever imagined in this game. And in July, is sitting at a BKB now as well. So these items are going to start stagnating. And for Mushi and the rest of the squad for DK, you could say sort of the same thing. A BKB for Batrider, like you talked about going to be really necessary. Burning. He doesn't do that much damage because he went for Heaven's Halberd. He's got to pick up another damage again up here, and he still has a long way to go before he's kind of the damage outputter that I think XDD is, so it just comes down to what DT want to do. They're going to smoke up. They're going to try to find Mushi, but look at where he is. Unless they get lucky and spot him out, this guy's just going to probably stay here and either force out or TP or something. I don't think it's going to be okay. Yeah, unless he shows himself. He might just show himself. Uh, oh, Mushi. He's oh, dead. no. That's your stun. And the Hex is also there. Now he gets blown up in your face, they say. You shall not farm. And, well, that's a good kill. That's a big one, though. That's, that's a lot yeah, of hate. They ping it out. That is yeah, a lot of hate. Is. Because they used the Veil. They used the Aeol. They used... I, they didn't use Quill, but they used Dagon. They used the Stomp, the Stampede. They used a lot of abilities there. Pretty low cooldown ultimates, but still pretty good nonetheless. Bernie's got a Rage and TP. He'll survive, and... They were looking for him there for a moment, but now it looks like maybe the tier 3 push is coming through again. It might come down to Lanham and his blink black hole initiation. Can he find these heroes out of position? There's an Aghanim Scepter now on MMY who somehow has got decent amounts of farm. XDD, Cracky's up on burning. Now Open Wounds is going to go. He's got Rage as well. That'll be down for about 15 seconds. Look at the overcharge. Look at the damage. The Hex up the toss back on burning. He can't afford to go down, but will. He's done. He'll have to buy back now. The racks exposed, as you can clearly see. The flame break not really doing much there. They've got to go for some sort of black hole. The fortification's got to go. Burning's going to run in. He'll use up. Oh, no, the craggy oh, again. No. Another lasso stopped by the craggy exterior of Tiny. Unbelievable. They're getting so unlucky with this RNG. Now, that's really surprising. The thing is, ice, ice, ice. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure if you maybe right-click on the Tiny in order to, like he wanted to maybe press R and left click, but you are not getting stunned if you have this option of in the Dota settings. Like this auto attack, it, this shouldn't happen for SSI, so I'm, I'm really surprised this actually didn't work out. But anyways, they're still in it. They still have their Rex. They are fighting against the Nages. They are fighting against the Tiny who is ridiculously farmed, but they can still do it. It 
Uh, I, I want to say it all comes down to Lam. If he finds this absolutely insane double Midnight Pulse, the Aghanim Scepter upgrade, for those of you who are not familiar with it, because it's a rather new one, it adds another Midnight Pulse on the Black Hole. So you're looking at a potential 17% maximum HP damage every second. So after the Black Hole, everyone is nearly dead. If you pair that with an OD Hammer being dropped, everyone is surely going to be dead. And then you also have double Visage familiar stuns. No, yeah. triple actually. The thing is, Dreamtime are going to split up. They're going to make sure that Tiny's probably on the front lines. The rest of them are sitting in the back, not grouped up together. And they've done a good job of it thus far. So for Dreamtime to get caught out, it's going to take, I think, either a smoke or something to catch them off of their guard. As ZK, they have another Nyx Bomb going. They're ready to go, but they'll find out an Invis room potentially. DTR right around the area as they don't smoke up themselves, but they're ready to fight. They're ready to go. They're grouped up. This would be a perfect place to black hole, but unfortunately, they're not going to find anything there. They're just going to go top, maybe try to take a tier 2 tower, which is, by the way, it's the last tier 2 left on the map, actually, for Dreamtime. So the towers are even. I think that's where DK are getting their gold from. Here we go, though. Coming up the river, DT, they're going to try to fight. Mushi's the last one out. Will he get caught out? The Stampede's going to go through. The BKB, the Hex up XTD now. Open Moons as well. He's got the Aegis last one. Super to bring him back on the other side. Meanwhile, the fight's still breaking out elsewhere. Big Black Hole might go. Is it going to? Lana thinking about it. Thinking twice. There it goes finally. Grabbing two, maybe three. He threw up the Midnight Pulse. Air getting low. There's the Aegis. Phase Shift coming through. Puck is still alive. Dreamy U getting focused now. MMY still alive. They have Mushi and everybody ready to go. Mushi bought back. He still has the Sanities in July. Gonna fall. They'll grab three. They get the Tiny. No, he's still alive. They're gonna chase after Dreamy U instead. Now they're focusing the Tiny on the backside. Burning, chasing him down. Open wounds in one second. They'll use the Heavens Halvard as well. XDD is gonna fall. Big place coming up from DK. They win the team fight. They use the hole. That damage was enough to get them down, obviously. Waste the Aegis and go from there. Yeah, Agadim Scepter, baby. Pretty good item. Lam, what a player. He knows what to buy in those dire situations. And I have to say, that was ridiculously crazy. I wouldn't have imagined this teamfight going so south for the side of DT. Sporting an Aegis and losing essentially five people. I mean, Ancient Apparition is still alive, but you lost an Aegis, so it kind of evens out. And no one on the side of DK died, or was there? Mushi died and he bought back. Neither. Mushi, yeah, all right. Well, he's got a buyback, so what? It's going to be uncool, and that's the big deal, but... He doesn't have the money anyway to so buy back, so yeah. And now, are they going to be taking Rex? I think they can get a tier 3. I'm pretty sure Tiny has buyback, yeah, he does. So they'll force the buyback and they get out the clip first, then the buyback. They might not even need it. I think they will, but they're actually backing off already. Wow, they didn't even force the buyback. That's kind of a big deal. They don't want to deal with the veil. I can understand that completely, so. Um, okay, so yeah, they put a little bit of damage on that tier 3 tower. MMY is going to ward up here in the jungle. They won their fight, but they're not willing to do anything too crazy. They'd like probably to have hole again before they fight, which is another minute and a half. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're getting closer and closer to, I guess, that climactic battle. So we'll see who comes out on top. There is the gold lead going for DK now. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that, well, they not only won that last fight, but like you said, they've been farming like crazy. They've been getting last hits all across the map, and they've done a nice job keeping up with DT. But man, this graph is such a roller coaster. The one not being so much of one, it looks more like a, like a pretty suicide style water slide. It's going to be the experience graph. And DT, they are 40 minutes in and they still have the experience lead. But what really does it help you? Considering the only one not spotting a level 3 ultimate is going to be the Ancient Apparition. The Tiny is really high up in the levels, which is great. He really needs those stats. But I mean, come on. At this point, experience is not as big as it may seem. So. Visage familiar stuns could be really nice, but yeah, I guess this is really all there is to it. And yeah, I mean, so far, well, BK, man, they're, they're making a comeback here. Yeah, and actually, you talked about the BK beyond Ice Ice Ice. He's very, very close. Um, about 600 or so gold away, and he'll have it. So Ice 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 with BKB, you called him a bit of a non-factor. I, I, I'd agree with that. I mean, I wouldn't say non-factor, but he's just not doing much in these fights when he gets picked off with, you know, Craggy or if he gets stunned up immediately. Now there's also a Bash on Burning 2. So he is getting a bit of that damage, and Abyssal Blade will help out a lot. Not only will he have a Halberd out for that uh, XDD Tiny, but he'll have a Basher for whoever he needs to bash in, and Abyssal Blade eventually for somebody else. So, again, DK, they're, you're absolutely right about the experience as well. It, and, and most people say this, this is getting to the point where it doesn't really matter anymore. It's really just about the gold and what items you have. There's the BKB for Ice Ice Ice. And uh, Mushi's next item, who knows what it's going to be. He's got a 6 second duration BKB now, so that might be his next choice. 4 staff for the AA. BKB for the Tiny now. 
So he really wants to fight. That's a big pickup mm. actually coming out for XTD. Yeah, the big thing is you can't retether. Whenever XTD's got his BKB activated, you just cannot retether. So you have to keep the tether going and you just have to be really quick with the retether right after the BKB is down. Otherwise, you sometimes can't pull him out with a relocate once again. And suddenly, your tiny just dies. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be seeing this because so far the coordination from Super as well as XCD was absolutely on point. But there is always the possibility in those high pressure situations. And well, it's also DK have to be really careful. Although I have to say, like this BKB on ice size is going to completely change the game for him. Suddenly he can just blink in and there is absolutely nothing which can stop him. Yeah, other than maybe a toss, but that really doesn't, it's not going to do much, obviously. So yeah, ice exactly. ice is... He's feeling pretty confident now. The Nates is still inside of him. Uh, Burning's ready to go. They have the BKB black hole, blink dagger initiation. It just comes down to can they use it. And Agadim Scepter, which we've talked about as well. And Roshan, up in about one minute. You can see here the respawn time coming through. They're going to walk right in. BKB, Lasso, and Fest out. In July, getting caught out. They might be able to take this kill, or at least a couple more. BKB going. There's the Shiva's guard. In July, still slowed up on the backside, coming through. XDD trying to fight Lanham. He'll pop the BKB. The black hole on XDD. Is it going to be enough? Can they bring him down? He's so tanky. He's only at half health right now. The soul assumption flies on Dreamy U. Ice, ice, ice. Meanwhile, chasing people down on the backside. Air is cleaning up. Lanham's going to try to TP. The fight is still going on elsewhere. Soul assumption. Dreamy U getting brought down in July. That is aggressive. He stomps up, saves the life of supports. No no one is dead yet for dream time now they'll grab another kill air gets a double he gets one that'll be on the bat rider who gets caught out of position ancient apparition eventually falls to mmy who was going real deep for it but a two for one trade i don't think there were any buybacks coming through looks like no wow yeah, she's still on cooldown but it's only 30 seconds. Mushi does he have the gold. It looks like, yeah, he's got 2k gold in the bank. So he's going to be able to buy back whenever there's someone knocking at the front door. But the thing is, is DT really knocking at the front door? They're just going to be content with going for the Roche. Well, maybe not burning here. Dude, air, I'm not sure. Well, they're going to relocate. Who are they going to be picking up though? Lam, oh no, he doesn't He doesn't have speaker B. Three more seconds. Lam gets chopped to pieces and burning is going to be the next one here. Raged up and ready to go. And XCD, ah, he's just going to be settling for MMY here. But, oh, there's the relocate out once again. And what is air doing? Eris just, uh, he's doing something. <laughs> he's doing air things. Eris, in fact, he's juking people, he's getting kills. He's been a big contributor to this game, I think. And Actually, XCD is now going for a shot in ages, so I think he sold his drum, I believe. I'm not 100% sure about that, but that black hole brought him to half health. That was it. That was all it brought him to. And that was like with everybody right clicking him down. So he might have had his BKB on during that, which means he won't take any yeah, damage. Yeah. But I mean, I guess if you get a, a BKB or if you get a black hole without the BKB on, he he's probably dead. takes. He, yeah, he's probably dead. I'd say. But, he's dead from the midnight bolts, pretty much. Yeah, but it is so good. They tr they they use that black hole just to try to focus him down, and they absolutely couldn't. Air was running him up in the backside, getting a couple kills. It was. The Bat Rider trying to get some kills as well in the front here around this general area, but it didn't really work out. So 44 minutes in, and DT are still looking oh, strong. DD rune. Oh my gosh, XDD. Thank you. Thanking the Lord based Ice Frog here for his RNG. Yeah, praying to the RNG. It's a useful talent toy here. And suddenly, well, he's... <laughs> look at this guy. He's sitting for 700 damage a pop in an AoE. Are you kidding me? With a bit of minus armor as well. All right. Well, Tiny, he's a good hero, I guess. He's oh, pretty man. strong. There's a gem sitting there that he finally spots out that he can't pick up. They're going to have to have somebody come up and ferry it for him. But is the time to worry now for DK because they're still not really that far behind. It's 1,500 gold, which is nothing at 45 minutes in. Their item choices are, I guess, working out for them. The BKBs are starting to get very, 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 very low on duration. Mushi's is at 5 right now. Basher's up for burning, but he'll have maybe an Abyssal in the near future. Uh, mm, then he doesn't have a buyback. Yeah. That's risky. DT, I think, maybe have to think about going for the base at some point, but they have to do it against a black hole, and uh, on the high ground is very difficult. But they have the Aegis now, and the last time they had the Aegis for Tiny, they went high ground, so... Yeah, this has got to be it, I think. Or at least oh. maybe the start of it. Yeah, they're going for it. Well, they, they can just slow push it up, I feel like. They've got the Aegis on the Tiny. If they commit too much on the Tiny, suddenly he's going to be respawning. He's going to get mecked up by the Wisp. And also the Wisp, he's got a Chi. So if the Wisp is nearly dead, kaboom. Just heal up the Tiny from literally no HP to absolutely everything once again. So yeah, 
We're gonna find out in just a bit here. So far it's a slow push with the Manta Illusion. That's the smarter play, just play it safe. And we can see it already, a lot of damage on the tier 3. They're gonna try to take down these Visage Familiars, which have been running and causing chaos pretty much everywhere. They'll fly away, there's nothing they can do about that. And that would have been nice to take out, but the Visage Familiars are gonna be kind of annoying as... MMY, well he knows how to micro them. They ping on the tier 2 tower top, and they might make their way up there. It's kind of low, they can just backdoor it all together if they really wanted to, but nope. Last was gonna go in, XTD, he has the Aegis, mind you. The tether's gonna be up there, he's gonna Manta out. Veil is up, the Ice Blast flying through, damage being done. Mushi's got a buyback, but there's a black hole, a big black hole. How much damage will this do? Everyone's low, but the mech out as well. They're still all alive. DK trying to do what they can. The blanket from air. Coil was already used. Illusory are flying through. Air gets a double. There's the Sandy's Eclipse. XDD has yet to die. The toss up. Mushi has to BKB. There's the Aegis. Can they get a building or two out of this? Everyone is low from DK. XDD thinking about backing off. He wants this tier 3 first and foremost. The fortification, the glyph was still ready. A huge black hole, but not enough. Everyone regen and they're getting ready to go back in. Melee Rax might fall to XDD. He might pop his Mantle Illusions and get out of here. And they'll make the Eidolons, but this is going to be the first building. Lasso on XDD. But here we go in July. Jumping back in with the stomp. The double edge. XDD. Toss. Avalanche. Vladim getting caught out. The Hex on XDD. The Soul Assumption. And Manta style going through. Mushi's now hexed up. But XDD, he'll fall. He will go down. He'll buy back. Does he have bots? He'll buy him right up. He wants the Soul Assumption going through. Air is done. There's the Stampede. Now Tiny's back in the fight. Toss through. MMY getting focused down. He'll mech alive, but he's dead anyways to the double edge. They want this Rax. They want this game. Dream time. They're doing it. The underdogs buy that from Puck. They got the tier 3 mid. They're going to get another set of Rax. It looks like Dream Time. They've taken control of this game. Look at that damage coming up from the Tiny on the buildings, and they're not done. Look at this. Straight tier falls. Well, you know what? No one cares about any sort of Rex. If you can just throw in him, and Aeris just going in super aggro once again. Lam getting stunned up. Double edge in the face, and hell yeah. It's another kill. Immediate buyback, though. And still, what can you really do? You don't have any sort of ultimate. No refresher up, up unto him. And Lam, he can just watch. He has to watch his throw and die, and that's it. That's all there is to it. It's gonna be a 1 1. Burning coming in once again. XTD, but he's not finding the bashes. Now he finds one. Oh, the throne is still alive, somehow, some way. But where is Burning? He's trying to eat everyone, and uh, yeah, it's just not gonna be oh. working out. No, they hold 600 HP, 500, 400. Is it gonna be enough here? 200, they need to do it. 200, still there's no one anymore alive. 30, he does it. What the hell? It's so close at the end, but dream time. They bought back on Tiny. He did as much damage as he could, and then Air completing the job. They're completing the task. Mr. Nike himself. The Air Jordan Master getting the kill on the throne. That'll be the end of the game, the end of the series, and the end of the evening here for WPC Ace League, guys. And what a game, man. What a game, Pimp. That was great. Damn. Well, DT. Air. What a player. Yeah. And so Dreamtime, they'll go into the TI4 qualifiers with a bit more confidence. They're still a ways away. They're looking forward towards getting into the playoffs for WPC Ace League. That'll help them along the way, but the one loss against DK certainly doesn't help. So 1-1, one, one, I mean, that's probably the best you could have expected for them. And really well played now coming out for both sides. I got to say, DK, they look like they might turn it around and come back into this one, but they just couldn't get the farm on burning. The black holes weren't quite there, and Mushi just couldn't carry hard enough in this game. So that'll be the end of it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. The Summit, that'll be premiering in a bit. 19, I believe, CEST is when it's going to be on. And it's going to be, I believe, Team Dog versus Rock's Kiss for the playoffs. So check that out here on the channel, twitch.tv slash beyond the summit. You can follow it there and twitter.com slash beyond the summit as well. If you enjoyed the cast, you can follow us. My name is Mont. You can follow me at twitter.com slash Mont32. With me is Pimpmuckle, twitter.com slash Pimpmuckle. Pimp, any shout outs before we head out of here? No, I'm done. That was great. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, all right. Long day slash night of casting, guys. I'm going to go pass out. I've been up all night, but uh, it's been a pleasure <laughs> casting for you guys. Take it easy, everybody. See you later. See ya.